Welcome back, my name's Tom and today I'm taking a look at the Grafton Flea Market in Grafton, Massachusetts. First off, let me apologize for my voice. I'm just getting over a cold, so I am a little bit stuffed up, but I'm gonna do the best I can. Uh, this is the first time I've ever been to this flea market, and this is very late in the season, obviously. This is late November of 2022. So I'm assuming the flea market is usually much busier than it is this day. Uh, but I still thought it was fun to get out to, and I'm glad I saw it before the end of the year. Oh, and also, if you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Yeah, Thanks. I should have worn gloves. This was probably also about the coldest flea market I've ever been to. It was uh, roughly 35 degrees, I think, and it was very windy, as you can see. Uh, so we were all bundled up, but it was pretty cold. I really enjoyed this show. Um, if you're coming for antiques, though, this probably isn't the place for you. There were very few antiques. Um, there were a few here and there, but the majority of the items, I would say, are either new or you might call them vintage, you know, going back to maybe the 70s or 80s, for the most part. Again, there are some items that go back further than that, but this is mostly newer stuff, which I'm fine with. I like a lot of the newer stuff, even though it's not technically an antique and it's not super valuable. I find a lot of this stuff very nostalgic, so I had fun. So let's see what we can find. You want a Rosie O'Donnell doll? Rosie O'Donnell doll? Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm always on the lookout for old video games, especially Sega, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis games. But the vast majority of the games you'll find are sports games because most and most collectors apparently don't really like sports games. They're looking for like Sonic, Mario, that type of thing. So that's mostly what I found in here. Um, other than this one racing game, which technically is a sports game, I guess, but I kind of think of racing games as a little bit of a different subject matter, which I am interested in. So I actually did end up picking that. I was also interested in that Jurassic Park game, but the box was actually torn up. So. You know, if I'm going to buy something, I tend to go for mint or near mint condition items. And it was only five bucks, which is a pretty good deal, so I definitely had to pick this one up. Here's something you don't see too often. It's a Fiero GT toy. Uh, anybody here remember the Fiero? It was a sports car made by Pontiac that came out in the early 80s. Generally, it's considered as a bad car uh, as far as quality goes, but it was classic as far as the appearance. If I could ever find one in good condition, I would probably buy one of those in real life. I'll be fine.
These are pretty cool. Uh, NES coasters for your glasses. Basically, they're coasters that look like Nintendo cartridges. And also, this Game Boy watch here was pretty cool. And this is the type of stuff you can find this online pretty easily. Um, I actually looked it up later, and the Game Boy watches tend to sell for about $25 to $75, or at least that's what they're asking. So his price that he gives me in just a second here is actually pretty good. Hi, are these yours? Yeah. How much are the Nintendo watches? Um, oh, those are 20. 20? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I'm assuming this is a piggy bank. Uh, it's missing the plug on the bottom. But um, I would guess this is probably from the 70s or 80s based on it being a um, blank cassette tape. And it looks very much like one you would see in the 70s or 80s, just bigger, of course. Bucks. Oh, All right, thanks. Yeah, I know it's hard to tell. Oh, pride pencil sharpeners with oh, the gas station? God. I don't know if the kids even still use pencils. I don't know. <laughs> the Pez even. Oh, okay. Thanks. Even comes with Pez in it. <laughs> yeah. Here's a bunch of Intellivision games in the original box, which is fairly uncommon. But again, they're almost all sports games. All the desirable games have been picked up. You know, if you're looking to have a complete set of Intellivision games, that's great. But again, the vast majority of people into video games just aren't into the sports games. And you'll find sports games everywhere just because nobody wants them. Records are all 5 each, 5 for 22. 
Yeah. How much are the average. Xbox games? Yeah, everything. Five each. Five, five each. Twenty. Some, some are even less. Okay. Like I said, if you make a pile, I'll make it as low as I can. I want it to go. So. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I didn't pick these up because the discs had scratches on them, and generally I do try to avoid any games on CD that have scratches on them. I think most of the books are Tolkien or Tolkien related. Okay. At first, I thought this was a pretty old game console. It looked like it might even be from the 70s based on the coloring, but the box is just horribly sun bleached. That's probably from the early um, 2000s. Anything over there? Do you the price making off of it? And I at first thought these were old Sega Genesis controllers, but they're actually new. Uh, they're USB, so they're not actually um, for the Sega Genesis. They're to use like when in Windows playing old games. So not too interesting. I love these fantasy magazines from the 70s and 80s. This one's Epic Illustrated from uh, Marvel, and then you see back there Heavy Metal. I love the covers. That's probably the best part. I'm not sure if that was Frank Frazetta on the cover there as the artist, but uh, whoever it was, it was pretty good artwork. Yeah. I think I've mentioned it before, but I have a pretty big collection of character glasses like this. And this is one I've never seen before, a Woody Woodpecker from Arby's. And uh, now these McDonald's ones I have seen before, they're fairly common. Um, I actually don't have them though, so I figured I'll uh, pick them up, what the heck. Would you do um, five each on these three glasses? What would the price say? Get a nine fifth or nine dollars. Okay, well, the same thing with those. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. You know what? Absolutely. All right. Sounds good. That was a pretty good deal. I usually see those glasses for roughly five to six each, so five each is just exactly what I want to be paying. Here's a Polaroid Instant Camera. Based on the design, I'm thinking this is probably from the 90s. So it's not that old, at least not to me. 
Um, and these headphones are kind of neat. I think these are KOSS, K-O-S-S, because I remember seeing ones just like it at Brimfield, but the uh, little logos on those had fallen off. I was kind of interested in these two uh, mini DV cameras here. Those all work great. Do they? Yeah, no, they did. I, I charged them all and everything. Well, I, I didn't fully charge them, but I took them in my house. Yeah. I got the one charger okay, with those the both chargers. Yep. I got one charger with both of them, but they both, it fits both of them. Hmm. Okay. Mini DV came out in the late 90s, and it was really the first HD format for camcorders. And back in the day, I couldn't afford these. I could only afford like um, eight millimeter camcorders because these would have been thousands of dollars. What are you asking for on these? 25 bucks each. 25? Two for 40 with the charger if you want to vote. Hmm. And they, like I said, they vote batteries, charge Yeah. Them okay, all right, thanks. All right, thank yep. you. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're interested, make me an offer, okay? Yeah. Oh, thanks. 40 for the both of them is actually not bad, uh, but I don't need two of them, and I don't know, for whatever reason, I just wasn't feeling it. I did. I did very well. I'm very happy. Do you want an open open can of Barbasol? It definitely is not full. <laughs> I always find it odd when they're selling stuff like that, like a half can of Barbasol or, you know, an open box of vitamins or something. Just very strange. I don't know who would buy that ever. December 18th. It's the last date. You have to pay for it. One thing I did notice quite a bit at this show was a lot of old tools and old appliances. Uh, I'm not really into that, but if you're into that, then this is definitely the show to come to. Here's an old Nintendo Entertainment System from the 80s. Definitely a classic system, but this one's in pretty rough condition. I don't think I've seen one in this poor condition in a while. It still has the original uh, Super Mario Bros. cartridge in it, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but it looks like it's missing the controllers and the, um, the power supply and all the wires, so... I wouldn't be interested in it, but, uh, you know, it's still a cool find if you're really looking for one. I'll have to make sure to come out here next year during the summer or the fall uh, because from what I've seen in photos, this part of the flea market, which is out back, is usually extremely full. Um, I would say it's maybe, I don't know, 20% full at this point. So um, there normally would be a lot more here as far as I know. But um, if anybody's been here before, let me know how busy is this compared to what it's like at its peak, like in the spring and summer and fall. Here's an apparently working Amazon Kindle. These things appear to be pretty bulletproof. I don't think there's too much to them. 
The three of them? And now oh, I'm sure somebody's going to comment that there's a lot of junk for sale at this flea market. And I have to agree to an extent. Um, there is a lot of stuff here that I would say should have just been thrown out, like that half can of Barbasol, for example. But, you know, there's also a lot of great stuff mixed in here. You never know what you're going to find. And I really like that. I like searching for the, you know, for the gold in the piles of junk. Here's some pretty classic um, records. Got Aerosmith, Rock in a Hard Place, Deep Purple, a lot of Deep Purple, In Excess. Pretty good. I'm not super into collecting vinyl, but um, I do like those records. I have them all on CD. Here's something you don't see too often at flea markets, an oscilloscope. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Um, I really don't even know how an oscilloscope works, but I know that little screen there, you could have those little uh, squiggly lines and everything. And I don't know, it's just interesting to see. Here's a uh, audiobook slash radio drama for the 1990 Dick Tracy movie. I remember when that came out, that was such a big deal. I was in junior high, and everybody was totally hyped up for Dick Tracy. And then the movie ended up not being that great. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great, and it was kind of a letdown. But all the hype around it was pretty amazing. Here's another classic, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego? This was another huge deal back in the 80s, I remember. We used to have uh, Apple II computers in our elementary school, and everybody would always play the Where in the World is Carmen San Diego computer game. Now, these may not interest a lot of people, but these really caught my eye. These are old PC Gamer demo discs. These would be included in uh, the PC Gamer video game slash computer game um, magazine. And they basically have demos of all the latest uh, computer games on them, as well as screensavers and other articles, things like that. I had a whole bunch of these up from like 95 to probably 2000. And then these are mostly from 2000 to 2002, so they actually fill out my collection pretty well. So I was pretty excited to see these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? Look at those things, the CDs. 
They're uh, demo CDs from game magazines. How much are the uh, the game CDs? Two for a buck. Two for a buck? Yep. Would you take eight for the stack? There's 19 of them. Sure. All right. Good deal. Good deal. Um, I should have a lot of fun going through those and seeing what's on them. Yeah. What was it? The calendar? That was 75? Oh. I thought this was kind of interesting. It's a Hertz um, speed limit sign from a Hertz uh, rental car dealership. I've definitely never seen one of those before at a flea market. Here's a bunch of Christmas decorations. I know it's December, but I don't know. I'm just not ready for Christmas yet. Good. Hi. This guy had a nice collection of comics here. Uh, good titles, G.I. Joe number one, first issue of G.I. Joe. Um, X-Men 125, which I believe is the first appearance of Phoenix. So they're pretty nice titles, uh, but the condition was pretty poor, in my opinion. Um, and I wouldn't pay 40 to $80 for those, but that's just my opinion. I never cease to find it funny when people are selling adult diapers at flea markets, especially when the bag's already open. But, you know, maybe I'm just immature. Well, I know I'm immature, but 
I think it's pretty funny. I've never mm -hmm. seen a Rolling Stones tongue phone before. There's something that's just disgusting, the way that phone slides into the mouth there. That's just, I don't know. Something about that. sure this is the hood ornament off a car. If anybody knows what car this is off of, let me know in the comments. Papers a dog. Okay. Now this caught my eye right away. This is an old program from the 1963 Big E. Never seen one of these in person before. Oh, is that the Big E? Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 1963. It was uh, lived in Springfield from 67 to 75. Yeah. And they used to bring us to the Big E. I remember the Big E. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mostly the animals and the pens. And... It's probably pretty much still the same. <laughs> I think they had like a big, big slide there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I went Remember on it. Give you a potato sack. Yep. Yeah, they still have it. I don't know. I remember going up in the air, hitting my tailbone oh, yeah, yeah. in the middle. They yeah, had like a yeah. rail in the middle. Yep. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> still the same. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> we were resilient. <laughs> that in Riverside Park. Oh, yeah. Which is now, what, Six Flags? Yep. Yeah. It's not the same. Yeah. They had the... I know they had racing. Yeah, that's gone now. And also, they had like bands used to play. Like, uh, yep. NRBQ. Yeah, they still have that. Yeah. But the uh, race cars are definitely gone. Yep. You said everything a dollar? Yeah. I'll Fuck. yeah, I'll buy that for a dollar. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah. I remember that movie, The Driving Back. Oh, yeah. 80, 80, 80, Good old days. The driving down the street, smoking a giant, a giant joint. <laughs> <laughs> this sea captain here in the yellow rain gear reminds me of a souvenir my parents would have brought me home from Booth Bay Harbor back in the 80s. I never saw that. I think they used to stay at a motel or hotel that had a giant um, sea captain that looked just like that standing out front. I think these are the first truly antique toys I've seen so far at this show. And they're pretty nice. Um, I'm thinking these are probably from the 50s and 60s for the most part. A couple of them look like they might have been repainted like this truck here, but they're still pretty nice.
I've always wanted one of these antique fire extinguishers, uh, but they've always been a little bit too expensive for me. How much uh, for the fire extinguisher? Hi. Hi. How much uh, for the fire extinguisher? No, it's good. 50. 50? I don't know how it would return. Yeah, it's probably all seasoned. Up. Usually, this, this is missing. You have to take it off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not bad. Hmm. All right. No, oh, thanks. That one was tempting, but it was a little bit too new, and um, I couldn't open it up to see if it still had the original canister yeah. on the inside, and also the hose had fallen off. So if I get one of those, I want to get a really nice example. And that one wasn't bad, but it just wasn't what I was looking for. And also, some of you might know, this show has an indoor part as well. That um, red building there up to the left ahead is an indoor flea market. Um, I didn't go in there this time, or at least, I, well, I did go in, but I didn't film because um, I just didn't think it was interesting enough at this point. But uh, if you want me to get video of the inside flea market next time, let me know. were pretty creative. Uh, basically somebody has painted on knives and hatchets and also plaques. Uh, basically uh, horror movies from the 80s, 90s. And uh, I don't know, they're pretty cool. None of them really jumped out at me as anything I really needed to get, but I thought they were pretty cool. And there you have it. That's the Grafton Flea Market in Grafton, Mass. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Um, I do plan to have a lot more flea market videos coming up this year. So until next time, I'll see you.